was going through your mind right after the final whistle blow, and then I've had a few minutes to just take this all in and put it on the table. I'm in a little bit of a daze, to be honest. It's, uh, I don't know. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of obvious excitement, um, some sadness. There's uh, uncertainty, and um, just pure joy for this team and for what we did. And it just, it just feels um, a bit strange. I guess is the best way to put it. But um, all in all. I'm really proud of what this team accomplished this year. And it, it's so nice to be in that locker room and see so many happy faces. And uh, for me, that that's as enjoyable as anything now as you get older. Landon, congratulations. Um, does this decision feel right right now? Um, well, I was going to wait till the end, but I've decided to come back to <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, it does. It feels great. As much a, a excitement as there is about the game, there's excitement that tomorrow I don't have to train anymore. I don't have to um, do a lot of the things that um, were the not fun parts of the job. Now, along with that, I don't get experiences like today anymore either. So, there's a lot of good, there's going to be some bad, but um, it feels good to go out this way. Hi, Lightning. Congrats, man. Hey. Um, tell me about where the Galaxy uh, now sits on sort of the North American soccer landscape. What's this club's position, and, and why has it reached that position? Thanks. When this league was founded, um, it was founded on the idea of parity. And the league does everything in its power to ensure parity. So when you have a team that wins three titles in four years, it's pretty special. And so when you put it in that context, it's not like we're Manchester United or Chelsea who won three in three out of four years. We're not the Yankees who won three out of four years. We're not the um, you know the Celtics or the Lakers who won three out of four years. We're a team that has the same rules that everyone else has and, and that's a huge credit to Phil, to Dan Beckerman, to Chris Klein and to Bruce Arena for being able to do that. So when you put it in that real context, I think it's a lot more special than just winning three out of four. Different positions throughout the game and just what kind of challenges did that present uh, for you today? That's not tough. Um, uh, I didn't have a great game. Um, uh, being able to be in different spots is something that, that Bruce um, works with us a lot on during training. We start in certain formations, but when we do a lot of our ball movement and stuff like that, he moves guys around so they're comfortable. Um, I think we were a little bit better um, with Jossie Wyden and myself up front. I think we were a little more dangerous. Um, we just couldn't get the second goal, and that ended up almost hurting us. But uh, all in all, it turned out well. Landon, over here. Um, okay. Just wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the tactical switch at halftime. You know, how did the game open up for you when you moved into the middle? And then also uh, your emotions right at the final whistle. There was a lot of space as they attacked and the ball turned over. I, I just we, we didn't do a good enough job creating real chances. So I think they wanted to get me closer to goal um, and put Jesse in a spot where he could be more effective out there. So it was sort of as simple as that. You know, it, it looks genius. Sometimes those things don't work out. It's you go on a feeling, and, and Bruce, that was Bruce's hunch. Um, the, the feeling at the, ultimate, at the final whistle is it's, it's so mixed um, and so wrapped up with, with so many different emotions. And so, uh, <laughs> more than anything, it's, it's joy. Um, but it's really joy for um, the other guys who haven't been a part of this or who I know how much it means. And so, it's, it's so nice um, in this phase of my life to be able to help contribute to that.
Yeah, Landon, right here. At the end of the game, you, see, you hug so many people as you were around. Was there anybody in particular that you find yourself getting emotional? Were there any tears during those hugs, those things, sort of thing? Uh, I just want to say, for the record, um, I think we've made it when Bill Plaschke is at our press conference. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing up. Thank you. Um, you know, there's so many ups and downs throughout a season and when you're part of a team you go through so many different things throughout the year and so you sit next to guys in the locker you talk about life you understand that you know some guys on our team have lost parents they've had difficulties with pregnancies they have things go on and off the field that um, are difficult they go through good runs of form bad runs of form on the field they have different personal things that are going on and when you finish a year like this, um, all of that sort of comes out. And when you couple that with having been a part of these guys' lives for so many years, a lot of these guys have been with five, six, seven, eight years, um, it's family. They really are your family. And so when you can celebrate it in that way, it's just, it's so pure. And um, I think that's the absolute beauty of sports. Landon, congratulations. At the end of the game, there was raw emotion in the corner there. When you went over to the riot squad, there was a woman crying and singing, oh, Landon Donovan, and you kind of gave a tip of the cap or a bow to them. Can you describe your emotions at that moment? Not many athletes get the chance to play the majority of their career in their hometown. And the way sports are now, athletes are quick to jump around and through free agency go to other teams, or you get traded, a lot of that stuff. So it's not like it was back um, you know, before my time, before our time, where guys would be with the club for 15, 16 years. Um, I've been fortunate enough to do that. So a lot of those faces I see every week. I see them outside the stadium. We get to say hi to them. I see them in the stadium. Um, it feels more than just a fan. You know, they feel like they're a part of this family too. And they're there every week. Win, lose, or draw, they're there supporting us. So it, um, it, it sometimes sounds cheesy that you you share with the fans, but we really do. I mean, these people love to be a part of this team, and um, it's as much about them as it is us. Uh, there was that free kick late in the game, and uh, it, it seemed like things slowed down. It was like a slow-mo. It seemed like it was a, a shoot for a Gatorade commercial or something. Did, was, were you just wrapped up in the game to kind of see things, see kind of that moment as something other than what it was? And secondly, the Galaxy, now that you're leaving, do you think they're in good hands? Do you think they'll continue? to keep winning these trophies like they have been three out of four? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're in the moment in the game. It's hard to think about anything else than that. Um, th this this uh, club is, is clearly more than one player. Um, they do things right here. There's a lot of organizations in this league, and some of you guys you know, may or may not follow them, but don't really do things right, and um, this this club, this organization, this team does things right, and it starts at the top. You know, um, Phil Anschutz is as passionate and caring an owner as you'll see. Um, he's behind the scenes. You guys don't see a lot of him. We don't see a lot of him, but he cares. Uh, Dan Beckerman is good as, of a human being as I've been around, and that that filters down. You guys all know Chris Klein. Um, he was a roommate of mine for many years and have so much respect, and Bruce. So when you have that spine in an organization, the organization is going to be successful regardless of who, who's playing. And you're the ultimate leader in goals, assists, those same six put in the playoffs, and now you have more MLS Cups than anyone. Does any one of those things kind of stick out to you as most meaningful? I think all of them uh, mean longevity. I, I say this often. Uh, there's a lot of players who come into leagues and are good for two or three years. Uh, to be good for 14 or 15 years is what's most difficult because once teams get tape on you, once they see how you move, you become um, a lot more predictable and it's, it's a lot more difficult, especially in our league. And so I'm proud that uh, all those records have happened because of my longevity, my ability to stay healthy, to stay on the field, to always produce. Um, all of those things mean a lot to me. 
other than the people and the friends you've made in the game, what, what do you think you'll miss about not being a professional soccer player? Um, well, there's no experience like what just happened. And so, you know, if you work a desk job, there's or a nine to five job, there's no real experience where you, you get to feel that. And so um, I can't imagine that anything can replace that in my life going forward, so I'm going to miss that greatly. Um, that's hard, you know. I think that's why a lot of athletes struggle after after they retire because you, you can't get that back. And so um, I have to be aware of that and know that and um, find other things that I'm passionate about. Well, you're in the league company, you oh. know, with a lot of those guys like Kobe, oh. Derek Jeter, Michael Jordan. What does that mean to you both professionally and, you know, personally? Um, I've always tried uh, to be a winner, and I think that's uh, I think that's one thing that um, people don't um, maybe appreciate enough that, that guys who are real winners. And to me, that's, that's as important, if not more important, than the individual stuff. Because, don't get me wrong, goals are great, assists are great, awards are great. But um, soccer is a unique game where you can't as easily influence a game. You know, in basketball, there's five guys on the court. In football, there's a quarterback who can always influence a game. In soccer, to be able to influence a game and consistently be a winner is very difficult. So I've always tried to do that. Today, um, I didn't have a great game um, as far as technically and that stuff. But uh, I felt like I was doing things to help. Um, other guys didn't have great games, but they did things to help win. And to me, um, I'm very proud to be in that company. That is harder than anybody realizes. Congratulations Hi, and thank, thank you. you for all the years. Um, you. You've spoken in the past about how uh, the mental game affects the physical game and how a healthy mind promotes a healthy performance on the pitch. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself championing that later in your career someday? Um, probably. I think, I think uh, probably more in an individual one-on-one -on -one way. I can probably help people. Um, I, I haven't taken the proper time to think about it, but obviously I've been very open about some of my struggles, and I, I think it's probably the last really untapped part of sports. Right. And it's it's pretty fascinating because it's your mental state, emotional state, can dramatically impact your performance, and so it's it's actually mind-boggling to see sports spend hundreds of million dollars on things but but not focus on that so uh, perhaps that'll change in the future um, perhaps it'll be a part of it but for me the the more meaningful way is to help individuals and um, if you can help one person that's worth it it's going to be our last question go ahead Landon over here Right. We always talk about athletes who hang on too long or, you know, we see them decline in their later years. Your stats show that you still were producing like you have been through the years and you leave a champion. How important was it for you to leave on this type of note to be able to say, well, I still produce out on the, on the field and I left the champion? That in and of itself wasn't that important to me. I wanted to be a champion for a lot of reasons, but not to, to say I can still do it. Um, I, I know the struggles I go through every day with my body and getting getting myself healthy every day and that kind of stuff. Could I play longer physically? Yeah, probably. But it, this just feels right for me. And so uh, it's always better to retire than to get cut. That's for sure. Um, and I'm fortunate that that I'm able to do that. 